Between Houston and Austin, off of Highway 71, is the sleepy little town of Fayetteville. In a small Victorian house on East Main Street is a shop called The Spoiled Quilter. And that's where our story begins. Today, I'm taking you from fabric to finish and showing you how I made a skirt in two days. Let's go behind the scenes while I sew McCall's 8205. Hi, I'm Tony, and this is So So Lounge. I'm super excited that we're hanging out together today. It was the perfect day for a drive. The sun was shining, the sky was blue, the air was just that perfect temperature that you get here in Texas in the fall. And luckily, I was staying down the road at my aunt's place. The road was calling my name, so off to the spoiled culture I went. This local quilt shop is filled with sunshine and cheer. The large windows let in tons of light, and it has such a cheery atmosphere from all the ladies who work there, chatting away and offering to help with all of my quilting needs. Now, I don't quilt, and you've probably heard me mention that before, but I do like to buy fabric at quilt shops. If you weren't aware, quilting cotton is just 100% cotton plain weave fabric, which means it's perfectly suitable to make clothes just like quilts. So the difference is that quilting cottons usually have a whole variety of colorways and different pattern sizes that make it more interchangeable for quilting, but you could just as easily use these exact same fabrics to make jackets or skirts or shirts or anything like that where a light to medium weight cotton would be appropriate. Small quilt shops carry designer, high quality quilting fabric that you won't be able to find at Joann's. Now, the Spoil Quilter specifically carries Moda and Robert Kaufman, and that quality of fabric is perfect for making shirts, skirts, dresses, or even jackets. When I went to the Spoil Quilter, I did not have a particular project in mind, as usual. I was just looking to buy some more fabric, but while I was there and wandering around and looking at all the beautiful fabrics they had to offer, some Christmas fabric caught my eye. I found this gorgeous poinsettia fabric from Robert Kaufman, and since I'm having a Christmas party towards the end of the month, I thought it would be really fun to make a skirt. Now, because I don't did not have a pattern in mind when I bought this fabric, I got three yards to make sure I would have enough. I've bought plenty of fabric and not had enough of it to do what I wanted, and I knew I wanted to make a skirt, and I thought maybe a kind of full skirt would be really pretty, and that's why this fabric was perfect. It's very festive. Um, it has a black background, so it'll be perfect to wear with a black top or a black sweater and still be very fancy and festive. Usually before I start any project, I wash and dry my fabric and then iron it. Now I'm not going to do the washing and drying part this time because I really like the stiffness of this fabric and I kind of want it to stay that way. I'm not sure if there is any sizing on this to keep it stiff and has this nice shine to it. I just wanna use it for my party and then I'll wash it and if it, it doesn't look quite as stiff, that's gonna be fine. I do need to iron it because there is that center fold down the middle. So let's head over to the ironing board and start that process. While I'm here at the ironing board, I am going to make sure that my fabric is on grain. So I'm gonna cut about an inch across the top and then on my fabric. Now, let's see. Okay, so it looks like it's a little bit off grain. It's about an inch on this side and almost three inches on this side, which means I do have to press this and get it back on grain as best as possible. Now, because there is this metallic um, print or dye on top of these poinsettias, kind of outlining them and making them look fancy. I am going to iron from the wrong side of the fabric. You can tell this is a print because it does not go all the way through. So it's not a woven design, it's a printed design. And I think it's always better to just err on the side of caution and not iron it from the right side in case that's some kind of a special treatment or if it might melt because I don't want it all over my iron and I don't want to ruin my fabric. So I just have my iron set to high. It's on cotton linen and I am just using it on full steam and 
we're just gonna get this all pressed or ironed. Technically, it's not pressing because I'm moving the iron back and forth. Once I am done with this part and I have my fabric all nice and ironed and that center seam is gone, I'm going to match up the selvages and then um, I've got to figure out what pattern I want to use because I have not decided on that yet. So we will do that together. If you're wondering what I meant when I said I have to get this fabric on grain, let me explain. So grain is the lengthwise and widthwise threads of the fabric and you want them to be perpendicular to each other before you lay out any of your pattern pieces. That means that when you cut out your pattern pieces and you make whatever it is you're making, that it's going to hang right, it's not going to twist or be wonky and like, you know, higher on one side than the other because the grain shifted. So to do that, I cut off the top and I am now matching that top edge because we know that is the grain line, that's where it is. And then I'm going to put some pins across the top to just hold that in place. And I'm just doing like three probably. This is 44 inch wide fabric, which is the standard width for quilting. And, and then I'm going to pin down the side to connect the selvage together. So then once I iron this, I'm gonna iron this way, keeping this top all lined up, and that's gonna help get my fabric on grain. This is why it's okay to use a lot of steam when you use cotton, because that will help get those threads all realigned so that everything is nice and neat and on grain and you will not have any problems with any of your makes. I did not do this when I very first started sewing and I had a lot of unwearable things um, that just got thrown away back in the day. So make sure you take the time to do that. If you tear your fabric across the top and it's the same width at both ends of that piece, then you are very lucky, my friend, and <laughs> your fabric is on grain. It's usually a tiny bit off. Um, it just kind of depends on the quality of the fabric and how long it's been sitting to really determine, you know, if it's gotten off grain. The longer it's sitting on the bolt and just waiting for you to buy it, the longer um, it has to kind of shift and the weight of the fabric pulls it. And that's kind of what happens. It's not a big thing. And it's pretty common with most plain weave fabrics. And this is an easy solution to get your fabric back on grain. So now that I've got the sides pinned, I'm gonna start moving my fabric and ironing it in that direction to make everything shift. Do not be afraid to use steam. I'm only doing this on the right side of the fabric, so it looks like it's, you know what? I'm gonna repin this and we're gonna do it on the wrong side of the fabric, just in case there's any problem with this gold dye. And I don't wanna mess this up because my party's this weekend and I won't have anything to wear. So let's flip this real quick, do it from the wrong side, and just repeat the entire process. When I was learning to sew, I learned to design from the fabric. So you start with the fabric and then build the design from that based on your fabric as inspiration. Now this doesn't work quite as well when you're using commercial patterns and not designing your own thing, but it still does work if you buy enough fabric. Now I got three yards of the poinsettia fabric because I knew I wanted a full skirt, not like a 50s full skirt, but like, you know, a nice flowy full skirt that was going to be festive and um, ladylike, but not I didn't want a fitted skirt, so I went with more fabric instead of less. So that's going to give me a bunch of options for patterns. I have a lot of patterns. I started buying patterns when I was learning to sew back in the 90s in college. I've gotten patterns from friends who just are like, hey, I'm clearing out these patterns. Do you want them? And I've also gotten patterns from my friend's mom who was moving and downsizing and clearing out her sewing room. 
Thankfully, when my local Joann's closed back in July, I was able to pick up this awesome Simplicity pattern cabinet. This is one of those heavy duty metal ones. They didn't take them to the new store. It's so sad. The new cabinets are like particle board from Ikea. It's so anticlimactic. It is not the same experience it used to be of digging in these enormous drawers and trying to get to the back and, you know, being worried your arm would be cut off. But I digress. So I have my patterns organized by brands. So Simplicity is in the top. Then we got McCall's, got Butterick and other patterns down here, and then Vogue is down on the bottom. So I'm confident there is a skirt pattern in here that will work for this fabric. So let's go take a look and see what we can find. As you can see, this drawer is not full. And the only downside about having a simplicity pattern cabinet is that the McCall's patterns are wider than Simplicity pattern envelopes and I have to match them. I have to line them up this way so I can get two rows in pretty easily, but I'm probably gonna have some more space back there in the back, um, but that's okay. So I have a whole bunch of McCall's patterns in here. I have a bunch of skirt patterns I'm going to just grab. So these are kind of the ones that I'm thinking of. This one has an elastic waistband. It's a level one learn to sew. The problem, of course, is that it's actually at the waist and I don't like that fit. I prefer a lower waist, so not really feeling that one. Um, this one is a straight skirt that seems to be on the bias, so it has a little bit of flow if you'd make it in C or D. Not A, obviously, that's just a pencil skirt. Once again, same higher waist that, mm, I'm not a fan of that, plus I don't think this is quite full enough for my purposes. I'd like it to be a little bit fuller than that. So then we're coming to the last pattern, which is a level two learn to sew. This is sewing a bias seam down the middle. So the fabric's gonna be on bias. That means that it will have that natural drape to it. And then also it's a stitching a curved hem. So the thing I like about this is that there's a waistband in there. So you can actually see there's a, a waistband, but the sizing is small, medium, large. Now, as I've discussed previously, the large tends to be a little bit big on me when I make it in a jacket. And you can go check out that video of the fleece jacket and how it's just a little bit too big and I should have gone with the medium. But because I do not want to have to fix the pattern and drop this high waist, I think the solution is to make it in a large, which for the waist will be 30 to 32 inches. It will just sit lower on my waist and give me the fit that I want. It is only gonna be two and one eighth yards of fabric. For view A, which is the shorter one that I'm gonna be making, it has the fullness I want. So I think this pattern is going to be the winner. Now that I've decided on the pattern, it's time to get it all cut out. And the thing I really like about this pattern in particular is that it's basically three pieces. There's the front of the skirt, the back of the skirt, and the waistband. There are also pockets which you can put into the side seams. I'm not going to be making pockets because I don't like pockets in skirts, especially when it's a full skirt. I mean, think about it. Do you really need more fullness added to your hips? No. And I'm not going to be putting anything in these pockets because it's basically a party skirt. So I'm going to skip that step, save a little bit of time in cutting and construction, and we're going to roll with that. Now, I got a tip from a subscriber after I did the five tips to sew faster. Actually, it's called five tips to save time sewing. You can check it out here. And one of my viewers suggested that I try cutting patterns using a rotary cutter instead of scissors because it was so much faster. And I've been doing it ever since. And let me tell you, it really speeds up the process. So if you have a rotary cutter and you have some cutting mats, definitely try that out. This blade is on its way out as far as it goes for cutting fabric. It's getting a little bit dull, but that means it's perfect for paper. My suggestion would be to write paper on the blade so that you don't use it on your fabric. Um, you know, just like scissors, probably better to use certain blades for paper and other blades for fabric. So I'm just following the line for view A around, smoothing out my pattern as I go. I'm not doing a perfect job because there are a couple of little folds in this. 
but I'm just going to start this process and get my pattern pieces all cut out. Now comes the part in the process where I need to consult the pattern layout. I know that this is gonna be on a single layer. It's 45 inch wide fabric, so I have to lay it out. If it was 60 inch wide fabric, we might be able to get away with um, cutting some of this on double layers, but not in this case. And I basically consider the layout kind of a general guideline as to how to cut it out. It does always depend on your fabric and how much you have, which parts you're doing. So one thing I'm omitting is the pockets. So I don't need to worry about how those are laid out because I'm not cutting them out. I did look at the waistband and to cut this out, I need four of each piece of the waistband. I think that's gonna be a lot easier to do after I've cut out the skirt, I can fold my fabric, get it back with the selvages matching, and that we only have to cut each piece twice. So I'm gonna put that aside. And I really want to try and match up the pattern on the center front of this fabric. So I, I'm i gonna cut each piece and then move it. And so I'm not gonna follow the instructions because I do wanna try and make that match. That's kind of my thing. So I wanna try and do that as much as possible. Now. One thing to keep in mind if you are using a print fabric is that you want to make sure if it's directional or not. If it's not directional, you just need to pick a direction and stick with it so that everything looks the same. So the fabric, the light hits the fabric the same way. So I don't think there's a particular direction to these poinsettias. I think they look fine either way. Personally, I like the way they look looking at it this way than from the other way. So that's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna cut out all my pieces. So um, the top of the skirt is the same on all of them. Before you start doing this, make sure you grab your tape measure because I'm going to be measuring over to the selvage to get a measurement that's 17 and a half and get my grain line all in the right spot. And then I am going to make note of where this notch is on the center front because that is where I want to try and match it in the pattern when we flip it over and cut the other side. Now that I've got all my fabric cut out, the very last thing I need to do is cut out my interfacing for my waistband. And this is something that I just always forget to do until I get to that part of putting together the waistband in the pattern instructions. So I'm trying to do a better job and just plan ahead and cut out the interfacing when I cut everything else out so I don't have to stop and restart the whole process. But the other thing, um, I've also been doing, once I cut the interfacing, I go and attach it to the correct pattern pieces before I ever start sewing. So then that way I don't have to stress about it because it's already done. The very last step before I get to move on to sewing is getting this interfacing attached to these waistband pieces. I have my iron ready to go. I'm gonna use a press cloth because I don't know, my iron's acting kind of funky and there's something on it. I don't know what it is. So I'm just gonna apply some steam, press these in, let it cool, and then move down and get it all pressed into place. All right, so everything is ready. I have my skirt pinned together on the center front and it is time to start the fun part, which is the actual sewing. I never think that the, the prep work is very fun. I usually do it on its own day and then sit down and get everything sewn or as much sewn as possible in one day. Thankfully, this skirt is pretty easy, so I'm confident to get it all done today. Since I'm not putting in pockets, I'm just going to sew the back panels to each side of the skirt to make the side seams. And then I'm going to go and finish my inside seams with my serger 
before moving on to attaching the waistband. So I've got my skirt put together. I'm going to head to the ironing board and press open the seams and then go on to seam finishes. All right, so at this point, before you attach the waistband, you kind of need to make a decision about how you're gonna finish the inside of those seams or if you're gonna finish them at all. You can always just use pinking shears and just clip along to keep them from raveling. Personally, I've never found that pinking shears actually keep your fabric from raveling, so I don't use that method. I have a serger or an overlock machine. I was so excited when I found this on sale at Hancock's back in the day when Hancock Fabrics was still a thing, and I snatched it up and it's it's just been a lifesaver. It makes it so much faster to finish your seams inside. And so I'm gonna get this all fired up and I'm only using three threads. So one on the top and then two from the bottom. And I like that better with four, it's a little bit bulky, especially for a lightweight cotton. So I'm not gonna do that, but I am gonna grab the camera and pull it around to this side so y'all can see how the magic happens. And this is what a surged seam finish looks like. So the edges are all enclosed. It is nice and neat. And I will keep going around the rest of the skirt to finish it out. Okay, I've got the waistband all pinned. It's all pressed. And now I've got to, it's not pinned actually, it's stitched. So it's all put together and I have the interfacing trimmed. It did overlap in a couple of places. And now comes the fun part of attaching this to the skirt and fingers crossed this works well because this is always the part that makes me nervous because I'm never sure if everything's gonna line up properly. So, um, but at least I know that this is gonna be a little bit easier because I can line up all my seams. So the waistband should, should go on pretty easily. I'm hoping that it does anyway. And um, I could just get this all pinned on if you are following along, make sure that you clip to the stay stitch line, do not go past it. Do not want that to happen. That is definitely looking a lot better. I'm going to continue with this because it's kind of stressing me out a little bit. And um, once I get that done, I will. we will head back to the sewing machine for more demonstration behind the scenes excitement. I am doing as I'm sewing is making sure that the skirt is smooth underneath so that's what I'm that's what I'm doing when it looks like I'm working the fabric is I'm just feeling from underneath and then also from this side over here to make sure that it's smooth as I'm stitching this seam because I definitely do not want any bunching along this waistband. this side but I'm not going to stress about that right now and next step is going to be to trim out the seam and then I'm going to go press it up towards the waistband and then we'll be able to get in start moving on to getting in the zipper so the next step is to put in the zipper and since I'm using an invisible zipper I have a little bit more prep work to do before I actually move on to that step. Now the way an invisible zipper works it goes into the seam allowance so what I'm going to do next is press the seam allowance of the skirt in place so I'm just going to fold my fabric um, to the 5 8 inch mark and then press it so that I have a nice hard line to line up my zipper teeth with. So by doing that, I know I'm putting my zipper exactly where it needs to be. It's gonna be the same on both sides. And that just makes the whole process a lot easier than just trying to figure it out because I don't have that crease there. I always 
feel like once I've got the zipper in, like I'm in the home stretch to get something finished. Next, I am going to be attaching the facing to the waistband. But before I do that, I have to finish this. And um, it just says to finish it however you want. I am going to serge it and I'm going to cut off, cut it off at that five eighths of an inch um, so that it's not longer and, you know, hanging past the waistband. It's kind of weird when it does that. So I put up the blade on my serger. I'm just going to run this through real quick. And I've got a nice finished edge. Okay, so I'm pinning the waistband to the right side of my skirt. And this is actually the waist facing because then we're going to stitch it together up here at the top and then we're going to flip it to the inside and it's going to finish the waistband and then we'll go to the inside and tack that in place. All right, we are golden. Now that the waistband facing is attached to the waistband, I need to trim out this seam. I'm gonna grade it. So I'm gonna trim one of them a little bit shorter than the other. And then we're gonna go press it, or I'm gonna go press it, and then do some understitching to attach the facing, or the seam allowances to the facing so that they do not roll. If you've ever asked yourself, do I really need to understitch? What's the point of doing understitching? The point is to keep your facing from rolling up while it's against your body, and then it starts popping up over the waistband. So that's the reason to do it. I didn't ever do understitching. I didn't actually even know what understitching was when I was in college, but it just makes everything look a lot nicer. So it's totally worth it to make the effort and, and do that part of it. Even though it's, you know, by this point, you're kind of feeling very done. I'm always feeling very done by this point. I'm going to move my needle over and line up my presser foot with the stitch line from attaching the facing and the waistband together. And I'm just going to sew it really, really close. And I am sewing through the facing side. This is the point where I'm always like, uh, I'm almost done. I just have to keep going. So I'm going to keep going and we're going to get this done. Under stitching is on this side. I'm going to go back to the ironing board and press that all together. And by doing the under stitching, we're keeping the facing from rolling up like this while I wear the skirt, which really is gonna make it look better and it's gonna be more comfortable. Okay, so my facing went in, it is all done. It is pressed to the inside. I do need to go back in and tack the facing to all the seam allowances on the inside at the center front and the side seams. And then I do need to tack it at the zipper in the back got it pinned so that is ready to go. I usually do hand sewing after I finish my hem so that is what I'm going to move on to next. We are on center basting stitch quarter of an inch and I am going to do this. So the cool thing about the Dritz Easy Hem is that one of the sides is curved, so that makes putting in one of these curved hems super easy. And once again, this is one of the things that I just didn't do in college. I just kind of would hem it and not do any pressing. Even though I have this super handy Dritz Easy Hem, I just didn't use it. So I'm just going to go around the whole bottom of my skirt along the hem and press it in at 5 eighths of an inch being very careful not to burn myself because this is a lot of steam, as you can see. And then I'm really almost gonna be done and I'm super excited about that. Now that I've got the 5 8 pressed in, I'm just going back over it and heating it with some more steam. The beauty of cotton is not just that it takes so much steam, but that if you let it set and you actually let the fabric cool before you move it, it's gonna stay that way. So that's the beauty of natural fibers. Wool does the same thing. Um, linen's a little bit particular, but it will, you know, it will be bent by heat. 
Um, this is just a really easy way and to just keep it there so that when I go to the sewing machine, it's not gonna pull out, but I do wanna make sure that it cools because it has to set. So just a tip if you didn't know that, I learned that from my sewing teacher in college. Okay, now I've gone full circle. I'm gonna head back in the sewing machine. So this is the part that I'm a little bit nervous about because I haven't ever done this before. I am supposed to, let me just snip these threads. I The next step is to turn the hem under at the basting stitch line that we pressed in and then fold it back up. And then if it needs to be eased, I pull on those threads. So I'm hoping for the best. <laughs> Fingers crossed this works. So I'm still pinning because the skirt hem is huge and I've run out of pins. And so I went foraging through all of my um, sewing organizers, could not find a single pin. And then I remembered that I got a domestic sewing machine in a cabinet that was also full of all kinds of sewing notions. And so I went over there and I looked and I found the coolest thing ever. And that's why I'm sharing it with you guys. I found these really awesome, it was unopened. There were little blue tapes on here that I, I pulled off. So these are premium quality dressmaker satin pins. Um, you got 500 of them for a mere 49 cents. So these are definitely vintage and um, they are steel. So hopefully they are not gonna rust, but we will find out. And they're just um, size 17, one and one sixteenth. So they are nice thin pins that I can finish to hem the skirt with. But I just wanted to show you all that because I thought it was really cool. And I'm actually getting to use some of my vintage um, sewing stuff that I got in that cabinet. If I can get it open. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna save the little paper because it's so cute. And I'm definitely not gonna use 500 of these. So I'm gonna put this back together and then put it back in the cabinet that I got from Mrs. Henchy and get back to my pinning. It's all pinned. Yay. I'm super excited that's finally done. So I am just going to, I'm assuming that I'm just supposed to sew this and then see how it goes. And if it needs to be, um, you know, gathered to just, or eased in to just pull that stitch while I'm sewing it. I'm, I'm assuming that's the process. <laughs> the instructions were not exactly explicit in how to do this. So that is what I'm going to do. done I'm gonna go press it and get that to all smooth out and I'm almost done yay I've finished all my hand tacking so the facing is attached at all of the seams I did add a hook and an eye at the top of my zipper and the very last thing I do is sew my so so lounge label into my skirt I got these labels back in August because I've really been wanting to just have my own label and it's just fun to sew it into whatever I'm making. And then, you know, it's like it's finished and I don't know, it's my thing. So if you don't have labels and you're thinking about getting them, get them. You will totally love them. It's totally worth it. And once I get this finished, I will go pop on my skirt and show you how it looks. I'm really happy with the way the skirt turned out. The fullness was perfect. It was just exactly what I wanted. Not too full, not too slim. It's very comfortable to wear, comfortable to sit in, and the length was perfect. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from all of us here at SoSo -So Lounge. And if you've enjoyed this video, you definitely want to check out this one.